This is CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. Find out more and open an account online at telhio.org. Now, here's your host, Bob McElligot. Welcome to CBJ in 30 Live, presented by Telhio Credit Union. I'm Bob McElligot. The Blue Jackets and the Boston Bruins get their second round series underway tonight here in Boston at TD Garden. And the Blue Jackets have a four game winning streak in this postseason. They will put it on the line tonight, taking on a Boston Bruins team. That is one back-to-back games. They won games six and seven of their series with the Toronto Maple Leafs. They are looking to take the early lead in this series on home ice tonight. It should be a good one. Coming up a little bit later, we're going to hear from Jack Edwards. He's the television voice of the Boston Bruins on the New England Sportsnet. Uh, he is uh, going to join me in just a little bit here. And Bill Zito, Blue Jackets assistant general manager, is going to join me after that. So big show scheduled once again today for you. But before I get to talking about what uh, the Blue Jackets and the Bruins are going to be tonight, I want to talk about what happened last night. Another historic night in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Another division winner gone. First time ever all of the division winners have been eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. Last night it was the Carolina Hurricanes in double overtime beating the Washington Capitals by a score of 4-3. to three. It was a game in which the Capitals were up 2 to nothing very early in the first period. And even after the Hurricanes made it a 2-1 to one game, the Capitals went up 3-1, to one, and that's all they would get the rest of the night. And Carolina just kept chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. They get it to 3-2. to two. Jordan Stahl scores to make it a 3-3 game, and then the goaltenders take over from there. And that's why the game winds up going into a double overtime. But what a game it was. And what a finish it was. You know, you watch a game like that going so long. And, uh, well, actually, uh, I was with Jody Shelley, and we were watching it uh, in a place, and uh, th- there was a guy sitting there, and he said, I just hope this doesn't end on a cheap goal. I hope it's not a fluky type of a thing. And Jody said, oh, it will be, because that's how these things end, with a fluky goal. But it really wasn't a fluky goal. It was a great job on the boards by Justin Williams, Mr. Game 7 himself, I think he's now 8-1 in Game 7s, believe it or not. And he's on the boards, takes a puck, and he just whips it full force right toward the goal crease. And Brock McGinn had gotten a half a stride on Tom Wilson, had his stick on the ice, redirects that pass right into the back of the net behind Braden Holtby, and that was the end of the season for the Washington Capitals. The defending Stanley Cup champions are out. And again, if there was any doubt in your mind or in anybody's mind that this year the Stanley Cup is up for grabs, let there be no doubt. Because the eight teams that are left, I will guarantee you this, every single one of them feels they can win it. Every single one of them believes they can win it. There are no more Pittsburghs to climb over. There are no more Washingtons to climb over. There's no more Nashville to climb over. There's no Calgary or Tampa Bay to climb over. They're all gone. They all have been dismissed in the first round of the playoffs. And the teams like the Blue Jackets and the Hurricanes, they remain. It is something. It is absolutely something as to what is going on. And I said it yesterday. And I'll say it again today. I love what the Carolina Hurricanes are doing right now. And why do I love it now? Why do I love it now? Why didn't I love it throughout the entire regular season? Well, I'll tell you. It's very simple. Because during the regular season, it had a direct effect on the Blue Jackets and what was going on with them. Because Carolina held a playoff spot that the Blue Jackets were trying to get. They, first, they, at one point, they just held the playoff spot. Blue Jackets were on the outside looking in, and Carolina had one of the spots. So there was that. Then, when you do get in, you're trying to get the first wild card spot so you don't have to play Tampa in the first round. In hindsight, what a dumb thing that was to worry about, right? But anyway, you want that spot, and they won't give up that spot. So it had a direct effect. It's a great story. It is a, it's a, it's a movie-like story. I mean, if they go on and win the whole thing, and I hope they don't, but if they were to, I mean, that's a movie waiting to be made, right? It's been that kind of a season. So right now, it has no direct effect on the Blue Jackets. So right now, I can sit back 
and look at it from a fan standpoint and say, I love what the Carolina Hurricanes are doing. I love what they've pulled off. I love that they just took down one of the Giants in the NHL. I love it. And if they play against the Islanders and they take them down, I'll love it again. But if the Blue Jackets do their job here against the Boston Bruins, then that would mean there's going to be a head-to-head matchup, and then I will no longer be a fan of what Carolina is doing. Okay? So for now, I can be a fan. For this round, I can be a fan. But if they wind up head-to-head in the Eastern Conference Final, I will no longer be a fan. But it really goes back to what I talked about all year long, and I said it time and time and time again. I've been waiting for the Carolina Hurricanes to disappear from the scene. They don't have the goaltending to to do what they're doing. I, I said that the whole time. I'm waiting for them to disappear. The Islanders and the Hurricanes. I was waiting for them to drop and disappear from the playoff race. It never happened. It never happened. And now they have sent Washington packing. So it's great. It's It's absolutely great. All of a sudden the New York Islanders – have home ice advantage in this round. I'm not sure where they're playing, though. I'm not sure if they're at the Coliseum or if they're in uh, Brooklyn. I have no idea. Again, has no direct effect on me, so I haven't looked it up. But anyway, uh, you've got uh, the Islanders with home ice there. You've got the Bruins with home ice in this series. What do you have on the other side? You've got uh, what's left now. Dallas is going to play St. Louis. St. Louis will have the home ice in that because they were – in the well, Dallas was a wild card team, and then you've got San Jose with home ice over Colorado. So that's what's left. That is the second round of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. That's what's coming up. Simple as that. But boy, that was fun to watch last night. It, it was when you get into a double overtime. Well, to get through overtime, you know there's got to be some great plays and great saves, and both goaltenders. Uh, turned those in last night. Give Peter Morazic credit. Uh, Peter Morazic, when he was in Detroit, they couldn't wait to show him the door. They couldn't wait to get him out of there. I don't know why. I'm not sure why. I don't know what happened. He was an up-and-coming, uh, the next goalie in the system at one point in time. He won a Calder Cup with Grand Rapids in the American Hockey League about five years ago. They were praising him when he was winning Calder Cups. All of a sudden, he gets to the NHL, and he didn't pan out the way the Red Wings thought he would. They get rid of him. They send him to Philly. He becomes one of a million goaltenders to play for the Philadelphia Flyers that has zero success. So Philly lets him walk, and he goes to Carolina. And it's really kind of a last chance thing for him. And the same is true of his goaltending partner, Curtis McElhaney, the former Blue Jacket. Look what happened to him. Blue Jackets, a couple of years ago, they, you know, they release him, basically, put him on waivers. Toronto grabs him, and then Toronto – after, what, a year and a half, they decide that Garrett Sparks is the guy that they should have backing up, and they don't need this veteran goaltender, which I think was a dumb move, by the way. But anyhow, okay, so they let him go. Carolina was in need because, um, what's his name, Scott Darling, the guy they paid a gazillion dollars to to come over from the Blackhawks. They might as well have taken that money and thrown it into the wind because it was a waste. Uh, he gets injured, he's no good, and he's back in the minors and all this stuff. Now they need a goaltender, and Curtis McElhaney happens to be available. So you've got McElhaney and you've got Mrazic, both kind of on their last kick at the can here and pushing one another to be the best that they can be. And Peter Mrazic wins a, a series last night against the Washington Capitals, so good on him. Good on him. That's the Stanley Cup playoffs. You never know what's going to happen. It's as simple as that. You just don't know what's going to happen night in and night out. Just like I have no idea what's going to happen tonight here at TD Garden between the Blue Jackets and the Boston Bruins. And there are varying opinions. And and one of them is that the Blue Jackets are going to be rusty. They haven't played a game in nine days. You go all season. You're playing every other day for the most part. You get your uh, all-star break. You get your five-day mandatory break. What happens every time we come out of that, the Christmas break or the the uh, mandatory break. What are we talking about? The first first game back. What is always the conversation? It's about how long will it take them to get back into the game. And that break's only half as long as the one they just had. So how are they going to be? Now, the difference is this is a different beast. This is the playoffs. This is not 
uh, third week in January. This is not the uh, the dog days of the season. This is everything on the line. So that'll make a difference for sure. They're, I think they're going to come out with a lot of jump tonight. And the Boston Bruins, I don't think they got physically beaten in that seven-game series with the Toronto Maple Leafs, but they are the more tired team. And I think the Blue Jackets need to take advantage of that tonight. I think right off the bat, they have to try to expose the Bruins as to being a little bit slower because they've played more games. I, I think they need to do that. I think even though the Blue Jackets are the road team, I think they need to establish early tonight. And that's hard to do, and it's hard to do in a building like this. They're always talking about the first 10 minutes. Weather the storm for the first 10 minutes. I don't know if it's going to be like that or if the Blue Jackets are going to be the storm. I'm not sure, and I'm I'm really looking forward to finding out. I really want to see what this team's made of. I mean, they proved so many things during that Tampa Bay series, so many things. They proved it to themselves, first and foremost. They proved it to their coaches. They proved it to the world. They still have more to prove, and they're aware of that. I just want to see them go about proving it. That's what's going to be fun to watch. I want to see them, how they're going to go about proving that it was not a fluke series, that they are what they appeared to be against the Tampa Bay Lightning, and that they can take on the big boys in the Boston Bruins, and they can take care of business, just like the little old Carolina Hurricanes did to the defending Stanley Cup champs last night. I want to see how they go about proving that they can beat the big, bad Bruins. Right now, I want to tell you about Tell Ohio Credit Union and all the services that they have for you, whether it's personal banking, whether it's uh, banking for your business, doesn't matter. They have something for you. They have something that will make your life easier. I'll tell you that. And this is what they have been doing for over 80 years. They've been putting people above profits. They have been taking care of their members. They don't go above and beyond because they feel they have to. It is just their way of business. That's it. That's how they treat their members. Now, why should you become a member of Tell Ohio Credit Union? I can't tell you why, but I can tell you this. If you go on to their website at tellohio.org, the question is there, the answer is there, and you can read all about it, and you can see if it makes sense to you. You can see if it fits you. And if you think maybe some of it does but not all of it does and you're not quite sure exactly uh, what's being said, this is very simple. Click on the live chat option. Screen will pop up. Somebody will get with you right away, and you can talk through it right there. Or if you like to talk in person to a real to a, a real individual, which is not a bad thing. Uh, it's going out the window these days. I get it, but it's not a bad thing. You can stop by any Tell Ohio Credit Union office and do just that. Tell Ohio Credit Union is open to everyone in central and southwestern Ohio. They are federally insured by NCUA. All right, coming up, I'm going to talk with Jack Edwards. He is the television voice of the Boston Bruins. He's out of work. It's all national TV from here on out. So I'll put them to work as we continue with CBJ and 30 Live presented by Tell Ohio Credit Union. Blue Jackets and the Boston Bruins open round two of their Stanley Cup playoff series tonight here in Boston. Seven o'clock game. Pre-game coverage starts at six o'clock on the Blue Jackets radio network tonight. And that includes flagship station 97.1 The Fan in Columbus. Jody Shelley will join me for the call of the games the rest of the way through the playoffs because, well... There's no local television. Everything goes national. Everything goes to NBC. And uh, right now I'm going to talk to a guy that's affected by that. He is the television voice of the Boston Bruins for the New England Sports Network. Jack Edwards is with me. Jack, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, it's delightful to be with you. And, and and while I was on hold, Bob, during the break, I was hearing ads for uh, for uh, bike helmets and gas grills for your barbecue uh, and uh, usually when I'm on hold for a hockey show, we're talking about bags of rock salt and snow shovels. So isn't it great to be talking about those things and still playing hockey? <laughs> it, it absolutely is. And you can understand this. Now, you just went through a seven-game series with the Bruins, but uh, it, it was the weirdest week for me because the Blue Jackets sweep the lightning. And you know how it is at the end of the year when the season's over. You're going a million miles an hour, and then you hit a wall. There's nothing to do the next day, right? And you're trying to yeah. figure out, what am I going to do for the next four months? Well, we did that, but it was only for eight days. And the whole time, I knew I was going back to work. So it was really weird. It was kind of cool because there was downtime. 
but I knew I was going back to work, and that was the first time it's ever happened to me, and it was it was kind of fun to deal with. Yeah, you know, uh, and and winning a series in short order is uh, a common thread through a lot of Stanley Cup champions, and it should give a lot of encouragement to people in Columbus because. If not for the sweep of Philadelphia in 2011 by the Bruins after they got through an agonizing overtime game seven first round win over Montreal, they then swept Philadelphia and then went on to beat Tampa Bay in seven and Vancouver in seven to win the cup. But had they not had that week of rest in between, I doubt they would have been able to complete that run. And uh, it it was valuable in in more than one way because Patrice Bergeron suffered a concussion in the final game of that sweep over Philadelphia, and he only missed two games of the Tampa Bay series. There's no way they win that series if he's only able to play like one or two games at the tail end of it instead of the five he was able to play. So um, I wouldn't worry about the rest. It's It's a real bonus that uh, the Blue Jackets earned, and, and I'll tell you something, everybody's discounting that uh, that win by the Bruins in uh, Columbus. Every team has a clinker, even if it's, if it's playing great hockey, and that obviously was a clinker for Columbus. Talk with Jack Edwards. He's the television voice of the Boston Bruins, and I do want to ask you, how do the Bruins avoid having happened to them what happened to the Tampa Bay Lightning? Because... The Blue Jackets, let's face it, in that first round, after the first period of game one, once they found their groove, they never let Tampa up for air. And I know it's a different playing style than the Boston Bruins have, but what do the Bruins have to do to make sure? You're watching big teams drop all over the place in these playoffs. What do they have to do to make sure it's not them next? Yeah, no question. And and the Bruins are the top remaining seed, so uh, their head is in the guillotine right now, so to speak. Um, I, I think that, that um, what happened in, in the Columbus-Tampa uh, Bay series, looking at it from 30,000 feet and not being there, obviously, um, was, was a factor more of Tampa Bay uh, than of the way Boston plays. Um, the Bruins had to go through such adversity during the regular season. They lost Zdeno Chara and Patrice Bergeron in consecutive games for medium-term injuries. They were without both of those guys for 16 consecutive games, and they found a different way to win some of those games, and they went 9-6-1, and one, which was way beyond anyone's realistic expectations. And that forced them to develop depth and versatility, whereas Tampa Bay – uh, I can't remember who wrote it, but uh, somebody said it was like every game was an all-star game for Tampa Bay, and they didn't really have to grind, and they didn't have to find a different way to win. And you could recognize in the Blue Jackets, even in the second period of game one, they had found it, and much in the same way that Washington found it against Tampa Bay a season before in the third period of game five of that series, and then Washington ended up shutting out Tampa Bay in game six and shutting them out in game seven. Um, I I think that the Bruins are really good at making adjustments on the fly, even in games um, and also between games of of a series, uh, which they did against Toronto. Um, But Columbus is a much more robust team than I I think any other team that's out there uh, still surviving in the playoffs. I, I don't think there is another team that can skate with such ferocity and unload such purposeful hits, not just hits for effect, but, but hits that change the uh, situation immediately on the ice and change the game and potentially change the series. Do you see this as being a potentially uh, old-time hockey series? And I'm not talking about fights uh, every other period or anything like that, but just with that hitting that you were talking about, the purposeful hitting – to where there will be uh, there will be a lot of uh, physical play, and uh, you know guys are going to be worn out by the end of it. Yeah, I I would almost bet, and I never bet on sports because <laughs> this uh, first round is a is a pretty good indication of why I don't. But um, I I would be surprised if both teams uh, come out of this series without uh, players that are gone for the season. I I think they're going to lose them on clean hits, uh, 
just due to the speed and the violence of the game and the stakes that are uh, that are at hand here. Uh, these are two very physical teams in a league that is getting away from physicality, um, but both coaches understand the value of good, hard hockey, and uh, that's what we're going to see. I think it's going to be a delight to the eyes. I think the crowds are going to be deafening, and uh, it's it's the best series out there as far as I'm looking at the second round. Talking with Jack Edwards, he's the television voice for the Boston Bruins. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, everything goes to national TV after the first round of the playoffs. And I'll be honest with you, Jack, I I love what you do because I love the way that you approach the game and you approach things because you just say what's on your mind and you really don't care. <laughs> and And I know that rubs probably a lot of people outside of Boston the wrong way, but uh, I think it's great. I think it's a great throwback to the game. Um, because, look, you're around that team every single day. Of course you want that team to win. It makes your job better and all that stuff. But how much are you going to miss uh, not actually being in there and, and calling it the rest of the way? You know, I, I miss it a ton. And it's way easier, as I'm sure you've experienced from time to time, it's, it's way easier to call a game than it is to watch a game. Um, because it's sort of a catharsis on the fly, right? You know, you, you just get it out. You get the emotion out of your body and, and it doesn't get bottled up in there. Um, and I, uh, I, I think I was born without a filter, you know, and, <laughs> and, and that's, that's okay. If you're doing regional games, uh, I had to throttle it way, way back when I was working for ESPN, but, um, it's kind of liberating, uh, just to be able to call the team that you cheered for as a kid. And, you know, I, I think uh, down the line, somebody's going to have uh, the bravery to offer split audio feeds for uh, the regional TV carriers, um, sort of a world feed the way they do at the Olympics, uh, where they pipe out the same pictures and uh, everybody gets their own audio. And I'm sure that NBC will be able to protect its sponsors and, and run them through all channels. But um, a lot of people have indicated to me on Twitter and, and other social media platforms that they'd pay a couple of dollars for a premium for a, an alternate audio feed. Because as you know, Bob, I mean, you know, it's impossible to know all 31 and soon all 32 teams in the league. It's hard enough keeping track of of the one team that you cover and the next opponent. It's just a tremendous amount of work that is all of our passions, but um, there's no way a national announcer can have the feel and understanding of all the storylines that go into a playoff series. And I, I understand why NBC has exclusive rights and they purchased them and that's all well and good, but it doesn't serve the fans best interests and, and to give them an option for a slight premium seems reasonable and it's hockey related revenue right absolutely and i i could see that happening too and and the world's changing i don't don't have to tell you i mean you've been in the tv business for a long time and you know now you've got these uh, streaming platforms that uh, might start getting into all this stuff so uh, it is changing so maybe that's going to happen sometime in the near future I, i i this is where you know what jack i'll be honest with you and you know tv rules all with all these teams and and that's fine i get it and uh, but this is when it's great to be a radio guy. You get to the second round of the playoffs because now you are the only local voice for your fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that is wonderful. And and there's nobody who uh, who works harder than than the radio crews in the NHL because uh, those are the guys that are they're ferreting out the sound every single day in the morning skates. Whereas the TV crews generally have an ice level reporter who's responsible for that and and. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to a lot of your uh, calls on the way home from games uh, on XM radio, on, on uh, satellite radio that I get on my car. And, and uh, you know, you make me feel like you're at the arena. And that's really the beauty of a guy who's really into the game and, and really into the call. And uh, you create the entire universe with your imagination and your instant description of it. And that's, that's the real beauty of radio. And that's the way I was introduced to the game from uh, the Hall of Fame announcer, Bob Wilson. That's really what drove me toward play-by-play because I thought to myself, wow, you know, I really feel like I'm inside the building 
and I can't even see it. But but uh, that's that's a wonderful thing for you, Bob, and I'm I'm glad you're getting a crack at it. And uh, you know, for for all we know, this thing could end with a parade for you. And I I, I hope it does. If the Bruins can't win it, I hope Columbus does. Well, Jack, I really appreciate that. Thanks for the kind words, and uh, I look forward to seeing you over at the rink and uh, having a further discussion. But thanks a lot for taking the time for me to come on here and uh, talk to our fans of the Blue Jackets, and uh, and I hope they realize that you're really not a bad guy. I mean, you know, the, the things they might hear you say during the regular season, you're really not a bad guy. <laughs> you know, I just want the Bruins to win, but after the game, let's go have a beer together. All right, sounds like a plan. Thanks so much, Jack. We'll talk to you soon. All right. All the best. Jack Edwards, he's the television voice of the Boston Bruins. Coming up next, I'll talk with Blue Jackets Assistant General Manager Bill Zito as CBJ in 30 Live, presented by Tell Ohio Credit Union, continues. Game one, Blue Jackets and Bruins tonight, 7 o'clock from TD Garden in Boston. Pre-game coverage starts at 6 o'clock on the Blue Jackets radio network. If you want to get together with other members of the fifth line and watch the game, the official watch parties, of the Blue Jackets are at Penn's Mechanical. They have two locations. One is downtown. The other is in Dublin. And the promo team will be there. You can go out and have a good time, watch the game with others. That is tonight, Penn's Mechanical, downtown and in Dublin. And those watch parties brought to you by White Claw Hand or White Claw Hard Seltzer. There we go. So they are presenting it. Uh, the Blue Jackets getting set to go here tonight. Right now I'm joined by Blue Jackets Assistant General Manager Bill Zito. Billy, what a beautiful day here in Boston, huh? Yeah, great day. Uh, Bob Johnson used to say, great day for hockey, right? Yeah, he did say that. No question about that. And you would know, being a Wisconsin guy, right? Yep, yep, absolutely. Having the ties to that program out there. Hey, um, I was talking with Josh Anderson the other day because one of the storylines here is the Blue Jackets having this long break in between series. And I had asked Josh if he ever had a layoff this long. And he said, yeah, three years ago. Uh, when we were in Cleveland, we swept the first round, and then we had like nine days before uh, we played the second round. And, and he shrugged it off, and he said, um, and, you know, he said it didn't bother us then. I don't ex- expect that it would bother us now. You know, you were running the Cleveland team in the American Hockey League at the time when they won the Calder Cup championship. And, you know, right off of that, like two years ago when the Blue Jackets got in the playoffs, we were talking about that experience and the Wierenskis and Bjorkstrands and Andersons. And even though it's a couple of years removed now, how big is that, looking back on it now, for those guys that now they're going through this, they're going through the big break. They did learn something there off that championship that they can put back in play right now this year. Well, on a couple of different levels, um, you know, the obvious level is it's very important, right? You're having just from an experience standpoint, you go through it and you're learning and uh, now you, you, you've been through some pressure situations uh, we think that it's very important. It looks as if uh, these players have been put into a, a high-pressure situation and have come through now in one round. Um, so, you know, we'll say yes. It's very, very important, right? Um, yeah. There's got young guys on our team who, who, I mean, Taxi wasn't there. He didn't have any problem, right? So, yeah, it's a, a little bit of it is individual, right? Um, and it's 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 self-serving to say, oh, it's so important. But I do believe that it is. I think that it it helps the guys understand how important the team concept is. It helps them understand themselves, their own limitations, how to get through them, how to get past them, how to get the most out of themselves, how to pick themselves up when they're down, um, how to pick their teammates up when they're down. Uh, I, I know I learned a lot about myself. Um, I learned a lot about uh, how to be a leader, how not to be a leader, how to be patient. Um, uh, when you think you might want to push a button and you don't, uh, even even things such as a layoff. Uh, at the time, uh, we were, what are we going to do with all this time? Oh, boy. And I remember specifically a day when I was talking to Jared Bednar about it, and we basically said, there's nothing we can do, so we'll just let's just do our thing. And, you know, we're resting. So, so you look to the you, – you always look to the good – what are the benefits we get from this particular uh, curveball? If you with JD always likes to say curveballs. Uh, this 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 curveball delivered us these benefits. Hey, that's great. Okay, good. Let's move forward. You got to play the game at the end of the day anyway, right? 
Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think the sum total of it, uh, without sounding like it's a real self-serving uh, uh, speech, is that is that it's it's really valuable. And then, of course, you have to ask the individuals, you know, what did they really get out of? Well, and that uh, you know, you got the Cleveland team that is in the playoffs now as well this year. And in fact, they need one more win and they can advance past the first round. You know, it is it's tough. It is not the easiest thing to do to have your NHL team and your American Hockey League team in the playoffs at the same time. And you guys were able to do that. The Monsters got in on the very last day of the regular season. So as we're talking about this experience that uh, some of the guys that are here went through a couple of years ago that they can draw on now, how important is it that uh, the young guys that are in Cleveland right now, and some of them we saw for uh, little stints throughout the course of the year, how important is it that they're getting that same experience in the playoffs right now? Well, applying the same equation, it, it's, you know, from, from the management standpoint, it's, it's vital. They were eight points out in late February, and they snuck back in and they battled. Um, they, they tightened up their game. They figured out what it was they needed to do. Uh, they won a slew of games down the home stretch to get in, uh, won when they had to to, to to actually make it there on the last day. And now those players who have basically been not unlike – you know, the parent team, our, our Blue Jackets here, in the playoffs you know, for more than a month, even, even at the end of the regular season, right? Um, now they're learning. Now they're, they're figuring out what they had to do, what shortcuts they can't take, how they dealt with setbacks. One of the most important things is they're playing. So if you need to rely on a player, like Adam Clendenning was able to come up and, and step in because he's been playing hockey where some, some of the quote, uh, the label that we put on some of these guys, the black aces, um, they practice, but they haven't been in games. But if, if the minor pro team is playing, now those guys are even more ready because they're, they're actively involved in games. And there, there is a difference. Talking with Bill Zito, Blue Jackets assistant general manager, and is this series with the Bruins starts tonight. What are you most excited to see In the series. And, I mean, you look at these two teams on paper, they look so similar. They play similar styles. They both can be physical. They both can skate fast. What what are you just sitting there this morning saying, man, I can't wait to see how this all plays out. This is what I want to see how it happens tonight. Anything jump out at you right away? I think I'm excited, and this is really just a personal – no, it's not just me because I was talking about it at dinner last night. I sat next to Torts, and we were talking about the game, and, and we were both excited for tomorrow night. And he was talking about his preparation. And at one point, he looked at me and said, I'm just excited to see the game start. <laughs> and don't you want, aren't you, you know, and there's that little bit of fan in all of us. And, and I, I'm, I know you a little bit, and you have it in you, too. Oh, yeah. you, you just you watched a team have some success for four games. I just want to see the Blue Jackets play hockey. And I'll worry about the specifics and the, the execution and the systems and what did we do and how, what adjustments and personnel. And, but don't you just want to see that game? I want to see, I want to see, those, I want to see our guys. I want to see those logos on the ice. And our, I want to see our guys on the ice. Yeah, I agree, and, and so did the 5,500 people that showed up at practice the other day. And You've been in Columbus for a couple of years now, and, and you're, you're part of why this is growing, and you're watching it grow. If, from a guy that's helped to put this team together, what did that mean to you to see all those people show up to watch a practice the other day? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's unbelievable, and it's such a great hockey community. Um, to see the support from the fans and, and the people. And it, to be honest, it, since since I've been there, this is my sixth year, it's, it's always been there. Everybody's always been so positive and um, interested in the team. And to, to see that many people come out, I, I'm really happy for those folks who've been here for so long, who you know you talk to and you, you hear that they've, you know, we've been coming since day one and, uh, you know, we have any number of people in the franchise who've been who've been here since day one, and uh, you know, Greg Kirstein you know, says, uh, "I was here with the, you know, I I put the locks in on day one, and, and just for for those guys to see the growth of the sport, 
in the community and the, the fans uh, get involved and uh, and, ha- and have a good time. It's uh, it's great. No, I agree. And it was fun to have that week to kind of bask in it. And now I totally agree with what you said earlier. I can't wait to watch this team play. I'm excited to go and watch them skate this morning just to get ready to play tonight. So, Bill, thanks so much uh, for taking a couple of minutes. Always great to uh, catch up with you. And I'm sure you're going to be a, a scrambling guy here. Uh, the Monsters get done with their business and move to the second round. You'll be bouncing all around. So uh, thank you again for taking the time and look forward to talking to you later. Thank you. Bill Zito, Blue Jackets assistant general manager. The Blue Jackets and Bruins get their second round series underway tonight. I'll be back to wrap up CBJ and 30 Live, presented by Tel Hyro Credit Union. Second round tickets on sale at bluejackets.com. Make sure when you're there, you look into the VIP party that takes place at High Bank Distillery or the Great Lakes Brewing Company party. Both of those are private parties. They are inside Nationwide Arena. You get a private space. It is all-inclusive food and drink. You get admission to the building earlier than everybody else. Yeah, all of that. Game one is coming your way at 7 o'clock tonight. Until then, I'm Bob McElligot saying so long.